Hello and welcome back to the Sh Museum, where I'm currently actually over in the USA, except today I'm here with you guys. We're going to have a full garage update, go through all of the cars here in the collection at the Sh Museum, and give you a bit more of a progress report on each, how old they are now, how many miles they've done, what's coming up next, and in particular, focus on one of the newest additions here at the Sh Museum, the Mercedes C63 AMG Black Series, and what we need to be doing with this. We've not really fully gone over it, or what's ahead for the car as well, so we're gonna have a complete run through of that, and then later on, we also need to head over to BMW to collect the M3 competition, which is now completed at last, the running in service, which is compulsory, the oil change, and now it is ready to go. But in my absence, while I'm over in America, of course, all of this is in the hands of Tom. How are you doing, Tim? Thank you very much. This is definitely gonna be my play box whilst you're away. Pretty much. So you're, well, first employee of the Sh Museum. Yes. You are garage manager. Yep. You are literally in charge of all of this at the moment, all of the cars, plus the garage and everything that's going on. And I, I wanna take everyone for a bit of a run through of all of the cars. And the first thing I want to point out, which a few people had mentioned, the GTR Pro. Now I took the GTR Pro for a last drive. It's been living here in recent times, but it was after my last drive before it had been collected. So it was just basically perched here for the time being. It's now, sadly, I could say departed, but I suppose that means it's on its way to a new owner. It is indeed. It's off to a new home to be enjoyed by someone else. So if you're wondering why it was here, that's basically why. But to go through all of the cars, GR Yaris. Start with the Yaris. I did actually intend to take this recently to go and do a few more mods and upgrades to it, but unfortunately ran out of a, of a bit of time. It's all very complicated with the travel things at the moment and to have permission to go to the US, took a whole lot of work and paperwork and stuff. So that was all quite last minute, but this is currently loaded up. Yes, there's some boxes back there waiting to be installed. We'll, uh, we'll keep that for another day, but there's some exciting things coming for this. We might arrange that you do some upgrades to it or something, but at the moment it's filled with, yeah, really cool next rounds of upgrades. We'll see when that's all going to be done. But the Yaris is now, picked it up at the end of last year, so it's nine months or so old. It's not done loads of miles, a little bit over a thousand. It should actually probably have an oil change service at some point. Yeah, we can take it for a service. We might need to set up something like that. Yeah. But we've, we've almost got this little run of the manuals at the moment. So we go from we Garris into the Heritage Focus RS. Yes. Now, these have gone bananas. Many cars in the current market have gone bananas, but yes. these have become particularly valuable cars, yeah. um, shooting up into the 80s or so now. So when I collected it, one of only 50 in total, in the first year, I think I drove it 4,000 miles, something like that. Since then, it's not done a lot more. It's not. So I, I did decide the other day was an appropriate time to take it out. We went and did some photos with Brad. Um, it was looking stunning and it, I, think it, I think it was quite happy to do some miles. For sure. So it's on about five and a half thousand. It's just under three years old, which means it will need service and MOT. MOT. It will need the MOT. So maybe that's something to look at getting done uh, in the near future as well. Yes. And while it doesn't do huge numbers of miles, it's definitely going to be hanging around. It's for it, sure. It's a very cool car. Again, I love it. like you said, the way the values are going, this is definitely a collector's piece. Yeah, and it's it's only going to get crazier. Yes. The funny thing, though, is that the Heritage RS and the GT4 aren't too dissimilar on price. Which is a bit crazy when you think about yeah. it. I've I've had this car now since April. Yes. Since since April. you came back from your previous USA tour. Indeed. So it's. It's only been in the garage for four months or so in total. Obviously, we wrapped it in the Inazatec Midnight Purple. We've got the Aurum Gold wheels. We, we have the, the RSNV wing risers. RSNV wing risers, the uh, JCR Developments exhaust. It's done, I think, about 1,500 miles for me, but of course, bought as a used car, so it's on about 8,000 miles in total. Um, it's going to have lots more ahead. The plan was, of course, to take the car to the Nürburgring, to go do the North Coast 500 in Scotland. Yeah and time just disappears. Time has been consumed with this project, combined with not really easily being able to go to other places. But I do think there's definitely an idea in getting a few manuals together and yeah. taking them on some good roads. Like the three we've just walked past, all yes. manual cars, and the GT8, which we'll get to in a moment. Oh yes. We changed though after that to the very different type of car, my 2009 Aston Martin V8 Vantage Roadster, the original Schmimobile, back on its 87 TB number plate. The car that when I introduced, I went through everything that effectively needs to be done to it and maybe you guys could do some of this but it's now on about thirty-one and a half thousand miles out of which sixteen and a half thousand or so i did only owned it's it for a couple still of over weeks. half the mileage has been done by you 
which is cool. It, yes. it makes it feel even more personal. If it had come here with, let's say, 70,000 on it, Slightly different story, but yeah. it's, it's almost as though you've just lent it to a couple of people for some years and now got it back. That is what it feels like. This has done fewer miles in the nine years I didn't own it than my SLS Black Series did in the five months after <laughs> I bought it. Just for some perspective on this. So yes. it really feels like all of the things that are wrong, apart from curved wheels and stuff like that, feel like I knew about yes. them. You know, the slight defects and, and bits and pieces e around Even it. down to the chip on the key, which was there yes. when you previously had it. The only thing that we definitely need to get done that a few people have asked about, tires. Yes. It's still on the tires that I put on that car in 2011, which is not good no. in many ways. No, especially not on a performance car. I know it's yeah. at the, 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 the lower end of the scale of performance, but it's still a quick, quick car. No, it is still a very quick car. So the tires definitely need to be done before too long. When I took it out the other day to go car spotting, it was a very gentle cruise. And for gentle driving, it's okay, but in any kind of sketchy conditions or down a country I, lane. I know I'd rather have some newer tires yeah. on it. So yes. we've, got that, we've got that in the works. Um, that's gonna be coming very soon. We go from one roadster to another roadster. A Little bit different, this one. A car that you're quite drawn to though. I am, I've become very fond of this. Again, I, I spent quite a few miles in this and the Pro now, and it's safe to say this was my favorite of the two. For road use, it's just far more comfortable, far more usable. You've got the air scarfs, although with your plans on the buckets, we might be losing those soon. That's something we should actually mention. So this is again, late last year, nine months or so, four and a half thousand miles, not too bad, considering, yeah. you know, even in the time that I've owned it, I was away for about four months of that. Yep. Um, I did buy a set of bucket seats which are actually over with Lucas at Opus uh, at the Nürburgring. Lucas did all of the upgrades to the SLS Black Series, to the G63, to my first AMG GTR. And the plan was to put those buckets into this. I'm thinking perhaps something slightly different. I mean... There, there it, could be another use for them. There could be another use for them. I, I do want to do more driving, more miles, more road trips with the GTR Roadster, but we'll have to see how that evolves slightly. Now, the two cars that would be here are the M3 Competition, which we'll yes. touch on when we go and pick it up, and the G63, which is actually over the other side. And we'll get to that more in a moment as yeah, well. That's a bit stuck at the moment. Yeah, a little bit stuck, <laughs> but let's head to the other side. On to the GT8. Yes. Four and a half years old, 10 and a half thousand miles. It's done a few. Yeah, and we're doing a few more recently, particularly because you're rather falling for it. Yes, um, I know you're not the most happy about the amount of miles <laughs> I'm doing in this lately, but it's, I'm going to Tesco, I'll take the Aston. It, it's any excuse to get behind the wheel. It's just such a phenomenal experience that I, I just want more. The thing with this car is most of my driving enthusiast friends who have got behind the wheel, you know, yourself, myself, Benzine Ben, Joe Achilles, when they've driven this car, it's literally their favorite thing in the world because yeah. It's technically challenging, but when yes. you get it right, it is so rewarding. That's it. It, de it demands you drive it correctly. And if yeah. you don't, it tells you. And when you do, the satisfaction, there's just, I, I don't know if I've ever felt anything like it in, in any other car before. And it's the end of the era, the naturally aspirated, heavy feel, manual <sighs> gearbox. Yeah, hydraulic steering. Proper car. It's, yes, I absolutely love it. So I wouldn't be surprised if you end up taking that out again before I get back. <laughs> Once or twice. <laughs> this maybe not though. <laughs> No, this one I will leave for you. So um. <laughs> the, center, the center is two and a half years old now, just over 3,000 miles. Obviously, it spent six months out of action uh, back at the time. For these kind of cars, that's actually decent mileage. It's not a lot, I know. It sounds like a tiny number, but it's been transported around. And when it sits here, it's actually sitting in race mode. So it's not the easiest thing to use because every time you get in, you've got to press the button, pop it back in race mode, wait for the suspension to sort itself out. And whenever you seem to move it, we end up with <laughs> rubber on the floor, which we still haven't managed to clean off. Guilty, it just lurches around a bit. So it's, it's a car you really need to be engaged in to drive, you, you, you need to think about it. Here's another one that I'll be leaving alone because <laughs> I don't fit in this one. Ford GT, um, exactly the same age, surprise, surprise, having been collected the day before the Senna. Yes, 24 um, hours apart. December 2018, the GT now sits just under 7,000 miles. Of course, about 3,000 of those were around the USA. It did have this service, which I confused everyone about when it had its service. And the Ford team are actually brilliant in the way they look after this car. Out of every car here, these guys are amazing every time with, with this. It had a major, major, major overhaul for the second year. They went through everything for me, looked at the car uh, in full detail. One of the things that was changed was the brake pads. 
which we mistakenly mispri mispriced effectively. Yep. So it wasn't as expensive as I thought it might have. Quite a shock initially and then yes. far better and then, afterwards. And then yes. worked out, you know, I paid the invoice and then we all looked into it and were like, ah, that's what's happened. Yeah. Again, coming up to, both of these actually coming up to three years old. Yeah. They'll need their MOTs. They'll yeah. need... There's, there's quite a few things. I think the Focus as well is going to need a, yeah. an MOT shortly on it as well. So we'll be getting those done. Mad, time is flying. Yes. SLS is a year and a half old. I know. And this is about to be really confusing. I've just realized because by this point, that's gone. That's we'll not the... here anymore. <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> the, the SLS, I bought it on about 6,000 miles. It's now on, I think, 18,000 miles, um, despite having been out of action for quite so long. I've had it obviously for a year and a half, but it's a 2013 model, early 2014 registration. So it's an, you know, it's, it's an older car now, one of the older cars in the collection. And you've just had your first outing. I have, and it was it. a uh, phenomenal experience. I mean, that engine, that noise, yeah. the long bonnet out in front of you. There, there's nothing like this. There really isn't. And it's such a, I, I believe it's such a timeless design that will, yeah. that will just age so, so well over time. And I'm still over the moon with my Mystic Blue. The one thing I do want to do though, is to effectively redo the wheels. One of the disadvantages of doing the wheels in such a bright color, and it's the same on the 675 LT Spider, is that any, stone chips that they get and if you're running with sport tires you're going to get stone chips on your yes. wheels after after that number of miles on tracks down the autobahn at fast speeds it shows up so much more yeah. even down to dirt it's just yeah. it's so much harder to hide everything you, you can't clean them so the easiest way is to to redo it so i think at some point soon we will get those redone as well to keep that in tip-top shape gt black series has obviously just departed i've just dropped it off <laughs> to have the color change to fit more in with the other cars here yes. in the garage after about is it 700 or so miles that it's got on it. Yeah. Wanted to do a few to make sure all is well. Um, there's an interesting one with the colors because of different regions and options, but here in right-hand drive UK, we could only have a couple of different colors. It looks cool. It does look cool. And I think it, it's definitely got the Batman look and the aggression, but what it does do is it hides all of the things like the gurney flaps, the carbon in yeah. the bonnet. There's a lot of people that actually haven't even noticed the carbon on the bonnet until no. they've seen it in person. You don't realize that on each side, that whole area is exposed carbon fiber because you just can't see it against the black. But against, against the yellow, that's gonna pop so much more. It's gonna look really, really nice. But then completing the Black Series trio, the 2012 C63 Black Series picked yes. up only a couple of days ago. Yes. A couple of weeks ago, time's flying. Fairly recent edition. And there's a lot we need to do with it. So there is. Let's, let's come back to that. We've driven a couple of hundred miles in it. Yeah. Duracell Bunny? Duracell Bunny, as I've affectionately <laughs> named it, or I say affectionately. I'm not the biggest fan of EVs, it's fair to say. Um, it, look, it's a phenomenal car. It drives great. Still not sure on your Rolls-Royce-esque quotes, but it is a lovely, <laughs> comfortable, quiet car to drive and very, very fast. But It's very fast. It, it's that lack of emotion. There's no noise. There's no engine. It's... It, it is kind I'm not of, there yet. There is this one trick pony thing of when you've done a launch control, you've done it. You've had that feeling of like the blood rushing as your eyeballs And in fairness, I've done the launch control against the center and that's true. managed to beat it off the line at least. That's true, but it works. And obviously for me, I'm heavily using it as a daily driver. Again, I've had it since late last year. It's about 3000 miles now. I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but it's my 10 mile to and from car. It's not a big road trip car, so. But it's become so much easier for you to use with the yes. installation of the SeaTac charger. It's now it, all of the woes that were there previously yeah. just just really aren't except on a longer journey no. of course and then it's it is what changing. it is having a charger is game changing so that's one of the dailies the other daily is slightly out of action right now a <laughs> <The laughs> little bit stuck <laughs> with louis still <laughs> we got louis loaded back up onto the trailer that we borrowed from zach's garage that kind of broke down and made a nice mess of the floor we were kind of hoping we could get it repaired in time to use yep. it to continue to clean up but unfortunately with part supplies it hasn't quite worked not right now but um, G-Wagon, I've had it for over two years, done about 14,000 miles now. I didn't think I would have this car for that long. It's shocking. I mean, I, it's safe to say I wasn't the biggest fan of it when you first threw me the keys. And uh, again, it's probably the first thing I do reach for. The, if I've got to go anywhere, this will probably, yes. truth be told, it's the first keys I reach for. It's, <laughs> it's got plenty, you know, it's spacious enough. It's comfortable for five people, the noise, the, you know, the speed is there if you want it. There's, there's nothing it doesn't do. I mean, it pulls Louis without even knowing yeah. it's there. It, it really is the best all rounder. More you torque can have. than hypercars, basically. Yes. But th this is what I keep thinking. If I were to sell the G63, I literally don't know what could replace it. 
I, I don't think there is like, anything. There's, there's nothing that does what that does, and it's so cool having that with the AMGs. Like, imagine taking the, all the, the Black Series on a run to Germany, and this is the support car. Yeah, that's okay. where all the luggage goes. Perfect for the purpose. <laughs> now, not here at the moment, the M3, which we're going to go and get. The GT500 that I probably just updated on the Schmiemann 50 channel about yes. being back in the US. You would have picked that back up again. Hopefully, all is well, fingers crossed, at this stage. <laughs> and the 675 LT Spider, that's gone for its fifth year service. Five years, MOT. Insane to think how fast that's gone by. Yeah, I, I can remember collecting it like it's yesterday. So that's done also about 17,000 miles in five years. And again, I'm sure people are screaming that's not very many, but I suspect it's probably one of the higher mileage 675 LTs. Yeah. Out of the, out of the 500 coupes, 500 and something spiders and the special versions they've made, probably the number of them that have done 17,000 miles, I'm, I would guess is about 50, maybe? Quite it's, possibly. It, so even though it's, it's mostly backseat in the collection, doesn't get a huge amount of driving. It will always get some. It's a lovely, lovely car. And when I took it down to Goodwood, enjoyed it so much. So that was, yeah, really quite fun. Anyway, we need to talk more about the sea. We do. Let's get to that. On to this then, the completion of the trio really for me. I was always hoping to add the three Black Series together. And a big part of the influence for a W204 is you, guilty. <laughs> it's fair to say that a C63, not in Black Series and not in Coupe form, but a 204 C63 is my favourite car in the world, and I think I might have pushed you into this one a little bit. So I've been thinking about it for a while, but you're, you're a big fan of the 507 Estate. Yes. And obviously that's the same engine. It's, it's this, this era that we don't have anymore, and it, it's such a, a big part of it. And I've talked about how different these three cars are, but I think to focus on this specifically, I said there were a few things we want to do with it. And, you know, obviously we're now on a car that's nine years old. It's a 2012. We've done 500 miles on it, but the car's done just over 18,000. And obviously being a W204, there was a lot of tuning with these. They're not yes. so standard. And this is no different. You can look at the front, you can see the black grills, you can see the black bonnet uh, center pieces. There are, there are things around it that have all been changed. Full, full D-chrome all around and yeah. the wheels. Yeah, various bits and pieces. And in addition to that, being a slightly older car, it's got some nicks. It's got some small paint chips. It's, it's got some... definitely not perfect. No, it's been used. It's been driven. There are a couple of odd scratches like up on the roof line and, and yes. small things, nothing that will really show up on a camera, but just stuff, I guess, that's come from time over the years. From yeah, just, just use. Just use. And there's one or, you know, one or two little things. I'd like to have the front carbon splitter re-lacquered. That's got yeah. a little bit of scratch. There's, there's a couple on. of marks on that. Nothing. The mirror cap as well needs replacing. We've yes. got a small, a small crack on that mirror cap. Small things that you get with cars like this. The big question though, is do we just redo some paint, fix up some carbon, make the badges and grills and stuff maybe back to silver as they were stock. Or, or seeing as it needs paintwork anyway, do we go the full hog and change the color? That's the question that's on the mind. Do we respray two black series? Or a third one. It seems, I, seem okay, to have, yes. I seem to have prior with this, having changed the SLS from Himalaya gray to Mystic blue, the GT from graphite gray Magno to solar beam yellow. This would then be the odd one out if it stayed white. Yeah, and, and don't get me wrong. I think it looks awesome in the diamond white. The contrast the, against all the black, against all the carbon, but I can't help but feel in this trio of cars, if this was something unique as well. A bit brighter, a bit shoutier. So this is open to you guys, open to the floor. What colours do you think would suit it? I mean, it was launched in solar beam yellow. Yes. Which is which... Quite, quite nice to do that in solar beam. The SLS was launched in solar beam as well. So they kind of connect together. Should we connect something from this onto there? Are you guys thinking what I'm thinking, perhaps? How would that look? And going back briefly to the Roadster, yep. your bucket seats are sat at Opus, they are. which were an option that. in this car, which it doesn't have currently. No, so this car has the, I don't know what the seat is called. Is it performance, comfort, something? Let's say comfort seat. Yeah, it, it's, basically it's a comfort seat. It's a chair, it's an armchair. <laughs> it, it, it's an armchair without armrests. Yes, as opposed to the bucket seats. You could have these. So when it comes to cars like this, you could buy a delivery mileage car with buckets in the cage in the back and you could spend a small fortune on it. <laughs> but to join the collection and to go out and use it in the same way as the SLS, I didn't want to buy a delivery mileage pristine example because then I would be the one who's going to do laps of the Nürburgring, take it on rallies, go to VMAX down the Autobahn. And that's kind of wrong on that kind of car. And it's the same with this. I've not bought the best of the best because that would have been outside of my, my budget for the car really. So do we now, maybe do bucket seats, rear seat delete, 
I think a cage might be a bit far. Yeah. Feels a little bit over the top. I think it's not quite that much of a track focus car, but we could see. Yeah. Options, see what happens. options and ideas basically. So fundamentally it's, do we do the buckets in here or in the Roadster? Do we fix this, fix the paint, or do we change the color? That's basically where we're at with it. And the wheels, didn't touch the yes. wheels. The wheels are full no. gloss black. Which I think they need to go back to having yeah. their They started like their this, lip, yes. in the satin black with the silver lip around them. Which um, I personally think is, is how they do need to go back. Yeah, so we might, we might head down to Whoops and do those wheels, the SLS wheels, the LT's wheels are needed, the Vantage wheels need the curves fixed, and I'm sure we've got one or two other things that need to Sounds like we well. might need to hire a van and just <laughs> take some wheels over. That's too many even for the G63. <laughs> Anyway, I suspect with time marching on this afternoon, we probably need to get ourselves over to BMW. Yes, and go and pick up the M3 before they close. Yes, so let's do that and then let's, yeah, let's go do that. Yeah. <laughs> let's go do that. <laughs> Off we go. The one thing I've noticed in the back of this car is how much louder it is being that little bit closer to the exhaust. <laughs> Makes a good noise, this. This is Tom's first time driving this car. It is. How yeah. is it? Loud. <laughs> and uh, it does like to move around a little bit. It's uh, in the wet, it's a handful. It's definitely getting a little bit of a wiggle. I noticed that when we pulled out of the last junction. Part of the fun, right? Definitely. Well, the M3's back. It's had its running in service, a couple of other little things. I'm gonna take that back now to the garage, drive together. And I guess that means for me being able to hear the Black Series. All right, we've got two cars together. Bit of a fun convoy, actually. This 510 horsepower, that 517. Oh, radio on. I'm, I'm not even going to try, even though I can now rev this car a little bit more when it's warm. Obviously, it's cold right now, but he's going to win that battle 100 times out of 100. <laughs> I give up. Right, you might as well take the camera and see. It's going to sound way better. <laughs> Let's go home. What? There's no point in trying to make any noise with this thing. That is significantly louder. We've made it back to the garage. It was just starting to pour with rain, so we've pulled the cars in, but I do want to go over and talk about a few more things. But first, I want to show you something that has come here from the team at Carbon Mobile. Now, this is not a paid promotion. I just think that this is really quite cool. Inside, we have the Carbon One Mark II mobile phone. Now, this is the world's first proper carbon fiber mobile. Not Kevlar, like most of these things are, but quite literally a carbon fiber monocoque shell around the back, just like you find in the cars like the McLaren Senna. Genuine carbon fiber, and as a result, it weighs next to nothing. It is about the same as a BMW M car key, significantly lighter than any other phone. Now, I've been testing it out and playing around with it a little bit. Of course, you have usual functionality, nice screen, it illuminates at the back as well. I think the camera needs a little bit of work, but this is really a proof of concept, the first example of a full carbon fiber phone and I pretty much wanted to share it because of course, I love carbon fiber. We have it on pretty much all of the cars actually in the collection. And that is quite a nice thing that I'm testing and playing around with at the moment. So let's head back over. Let's have an update then about the M3. I've owned it since April as well as the GT4. So that's now done 1,300 miles in about four months. And yes, I'm slightly embarrassed by that. It's not a lot considering some of the others. So now that it's had the oil change, it is time to start enjoying it a little bit more. It's done 1,300 miles, a bit of daily driving, a bit of back and forth up the motorways, that kind of thing. But even having these two side by side, we've got about the same power between them. They're both rear wheel drive. In the UK, you can, about from now, I think, order the X-Drive version of the M3 and the M4, but initially it was the rear wheel drive only. They're all auto here. We can't have the manuals over here, but obviously with all of the cars, we have quite a mix of different engines, gearboxes, configurations, layouts, and that's half the fun. And I want to do more effectively driving one back to back with another to get a feel for what they're all all about basically but these two both new arrivals in the garage you could argue and i hope this has been a quite 
interesting update as to all of the Shmi mobiles, as to everything that's here at the moment. Obviously, the GT500 in the US, but all of the UK side of things. In the future, we've got the Hurricane STO on the horizon for later this year. We've got the Ferrari SF90 next year. We've got the Lotus Amira next year as well, and a couple of others potentially to join at some point. Some perhaps more unusual, unexpected things to come to the garage. Now that I have the space, you know, the ability to park up more cars and have more room all around makes it a little bit interesting in terms of what can join the Schmimobiles as well. For now though, I think that's it for our update. Great to have the M3 officially run in and ready to go. We'll have some more fun with it in the near future.